Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be doing a tier list of a hundred different manhwa that I read and where they kind of stand in regards to each other. A lot of you asked me for what manhwa I'm reading or a complete full list. This is about as close as I can get while giving you guys a little bit of thoughts on what I think about the series and how I rank them along the way. Let's jump right into it. Alright, for the purposes of this list, I've made a little bit of changes to the list. So we got S rank, we've got a lot of potential for those ones that are showing to be really good, but are not quite S rank because they're too early on. We've got the A, B, C, D, E, and the Hurt My Soul for the ones that just pain me, either for where they go or where they start. Let's start right away. Alright, so starting off with um, SSS class Gotcha Hunter. Uh, Interesting concept, bringing gacha mechanics into like a game-like system power mode world, uh, giving the character some buffs and some different uh, items depending on the situation with gacha. It's novel, but I don't think it's that great. I'm going to shove it into the C rank, and I think there's going to be a lot of stuff landing around that C or D rank in this thing. Return of the Crazy Demon. Uh, if it's on a lot of my top 10 lists, I love it to death. It's got amazing art, um, amazing art, but a storyline that's not exactly strong. The fights are awesome, the blood, the gore is great, and I think the main character is amazing, but I think he's gonna land in the B rank in this case. Rise from the Rubble. Rise from the Rubble is a bit of a roller coaster of, because uh, I do like stories where a character. Um, starts off with down in the dumps and finds his way up to becoming more powerful. I think it does things pretty well. Uh, I think it has some weaker points in the series. Particularly, I think it starts off a little slow. Uh, there's some cool moments, but I think it's a little mid at the beginning. But it's it's definitely picked up. I'm going to put you in the C rank. You're better than Gacha. Actually, no. I'm going to put Gacha in D rank. Sorry. Okay, Barbarian Quest. I'm going to get some hate for this because for some reason I can't get into this manhwa. Its visuals are insane and I think it has a lot of potential for the future. For me, I'm going to put in B rank for the time being. Yeah, I'm going to put it in B rank for the time being because I do think it's doing some stuff that's different. It's enjoyable for sure and its its fights are really awesome to look at. But for some reason, I'm not as excited about it. I'm not ready to put it in a lot of potential to make it to S rank quite yet. Uh, and I don't think it's an A ranker quite yet either. Um, Doctor's Rebirth. Uh, I really enjoyed those. I went through like the medical uh, manhwa for a little while, and I definitely enjoyed a few of them. Medi like Doctor's Rebirth uh, and Medical Rebirth are both really good, and I would put this as a solid B tier right there. I, I really, really enjoyed this one, without a doubt. Okay, youngest, um, Return of the Shattered Constellation, honestly, is not that great. I, I'm going to put it as, as a D ranker. I, I was really excited about this one when it started because the visuals of the first chapter were so, so good. Um, but I just don't think it's that great. It's using some concepts that are, are out there. Uh, but I think it's not doing anything particularly special that all other series are doing significantly better. The only thing I will say are pretty good is the visuals, but I feel like they really were at its best in those first few chapters and not that great after. Uh, youngest Sign of Mages, um, it's fine. Um, it's nowhere above a D rank for the time being. Uh, I don't think it's done anything special. Uh, it's, it's still very new in its run, so it's in this first 20 or 30 chapters. Um, Archmage Transcending Through Regression, okay. So if you want generic, I'm gonna put this in E, e, e rank right now. Okay, like this is this is gonna get a, maybe a little bit of hate because uh, like so a fair bit of people are liking this one. But if you want one that's really not doing anything special right now, Archmage Transcending Through Regression is doing basically a rehash of every other series like it. There are some fun. I'll say getting back at the people that wronged you in your past life kind of scenarios. But considering how much of a big situation the main character is in in the first chapter, what follows is so 
basic that it's kind of disappointing. That being said, there's a really cool thing that happens in the first few chapters. This honestly is one of the ones that has the potential to jump up like two or three ranks for it, but for the time being, I'll leave it there. Peerless Dad, honestly, is a solid B rank. Uh, Peerless Dad is, is a good manhwa right there. Just just seeing the, the characters grow over time. Oh, I'm actually just remind, reminded that I forgot a manhwa on this list. But yeah, Peerless Dad, definitely worth a check out. Hey, nothing in the A rank for me yet. Uh, Blade of Evolution, this is my first Hurt My Soul. Uh, Blade of Evolution for me is probably one of the biggest disappointments in manhwa in the past, well, since I've started reading manhwa. From the first chapter, I was like, I love these visuals. I think they have just a cool flair to them. They're really stylish and everything else. But the character's um, psychological state and the way he acts does not reflect the situation that happens in the first chapter. Like first chapters, main character, other people sacrifice their lives so that he can survive and he turns into a complete asshole. And you can see that the creator wanted to create this silent, badass protagonist, like a Sung Jin Woo, but without giving him the character motivations that Sung Jin Woo had to start with, without giving him the struggle that the other character had. He just kind of came into his powers. And after that, there's some cool fights. There's definitely some amazing visuals, but it is significantly disappointing. And it just ended also a little while back. And it's, it's very mid. Um, Skeleton who failed to defend the dungeon. Honestly, it's one that I haven't been able to get into. I know it's loved. I'm going to put Skeleton in C rank. The only reason I'm putting it in C rank is I see what people love with it. Uh, I really just can't get into it because of the skeleton main character. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't work at all for me. The design is not something I'm into. Uh, it, it doesn't work. That being said, I think the fights are awesome. I think it's got some great setup. I'm up to date on it, um, but I'm not blown away by it. And I think this is one of the ones that's going to end up being very, very different. Arcane Sniper is some E-class stuff. Oh, man. Disappointing. I'm always excited to see something like a different type of weapon involved in fights and bringing people to um, to use guns or snipers and stuff like that. Thought it was a cool concept, but uh, yeah, it's not great. It's it's definitely not great. I am the Sorcerer King. I'm gonna put this in B tier. I'm gonna put I am the Sorcerer King in B tier because. It has no real ending. No, I'm gonna put I'm the Sorcerer King in A. Honestly, if you want a scaling mage story where the fights get crazier and crazier, the art style is kind of cool. Um, the storyline's fun, but it gets redundant. It gets a little repetitive after a while. Okay, no, we're gonna leave it in B tier. Leave it in B tier. Feng Shenji is my S. When it comes to Ch a Chinese manhwa, Feng Shenji, just due to the visuals alone, is a must read. Is it a basic fight the next guy, fight the next guy, fight the next guy story with a main character that's just like brash and takes risks and all that? 100%. But does it have one, some, one of the coolest art styles ever created as well? It's worth checking it. And some of the other S ranks that are going to be on this list are because they are just at the pinnacle of something. And I think that Feng Shenji, when it comes to Chinese manhwa, is definitely in the must read. Undefeatable Swordsman, man. Oh, so disappointing. I was really liking this manhwa. I'm going to put it down to a C. Uh, it has some amazing fights. I think the first like um, couple of arcs were phenomenal. Seeing the main character grow, I was really down with this manhwa. But there's some stuff that happened recently that just is not interesting to me. It, it completely lost me. Even though I find the main character is a badass, it just was not working for me. Okay, Volcanic Age. I can't deny Volcanic Age is good. I, I think I'll put Volcanic Age around the same level as Undefeatable Swordsman. Uh, they're both manual that I enjoy quite a bit. I don't think they're perfect. There's some storyline challenges in this one. Uh, main character is pretty engaging. Uh, yeah, just in general, it's a it's a pretty good manhwa. It, it, it's I won't call it, I even though it's the middle of the range, I can't even call it mid. It is definitely a little bit above the the, the mid range, but it it still has some ways to go. 
Leviathan, some A rank stuff. Leviathan finished. If you want a new manhwa to, to read that is finished, Leviathan has sick visuals. They call it, like many people call it the attack on Titan of the Sea because it's like these the monster design is kind of crazy and over the top. Uh, but this time it's in the ocean and it's it's scary as hell. Uh, seeing the main characters and what they go through, uh, it, it's tough, but it's it's really really cool. I definitely get some manga vibes from Leviathan, but it's it's definitely worth reading. Oh, bow blade spirit. Uh, 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 bow blade spirit, bow blade spirit, bow blade spirit. Okay, so bow blade spirit, terrible first arc. Okay, I'm gonna put it in C rank. Actually, no, I'm gonna put bow blade spirit in D rank. Okay, I might get some hate for this. Bow blade spirit, first arc, total trash. Has almost nothing to do with what happens right afterwards. Yes, it's the setup, it creates his relationship, his power scaling. Amazing second arc when he um, I should say almost third arc because it's Once he has the bow and the things and he starts uh, doing like warlike things it becomes really good and Later on there's a kid and it completely killed my motivation for the series definitely an inconsistent um, Tone of, of story. It's doing something different which I have to respect I still think these are worth reading if it's not in hurt my soul Honestly, it's probably still worth reading and e maybe an avoid for the time being yeah. All right. Solo leveling. Where am I going to put solo leveling? Okay. I'm going to put solo leveling in the S tier, even though I actually dunk on solo leveling quite a bit. I think visually, action wise, movement wise, like solo leveling just does a lot of stuff that's better than most other Manoa. Uh, the pacing was great. Uh, the week to week read of this was like nail biting and exciting, but I don't know. Like, Soul Leveling's story kind of fell apart, and the ending I don't find was satisfying whatsoever. But at least it delivered one of what it was supposed to be, and that's amazing fights with great visuals, and it was consistent throughout the way. So I think it's definitely deserving of that. Okay. The beginning after the end. The beginning after the end. The beginning after the end is probably the most on the fence. Uh, of being between S tier and A tier because it has some arcs that are painful but overall it has an amazing story. I think the biggest challenge the beginning of Astro the end has is the consistency of delivering a satisfying arc. Uh, the training arcs are a kind of painful. The school arc was really painful and these are long arcs like general well at least the school arc was a long arc. So, like, to have a series be painful to read for that long is, is rough. But the storyline they're telling is really good. The, the quality of what's going on is really good. The other place I think the series lacks is in the art style. Uh, the art style is really not well associated to the darker moments in the series. And I think it really fails at delivering... Um, just how grim and dark this world is becoming. And I feel like the more we go forward in the story, for those that read the, the light novel, the harder it's going to be to read some of these monstrous moments because they just don't come across as monstrous as they should. Particularly when it comes to just monster design. The monsters are not threatening. They look like giant teddy bears in a way. So yeah. Mercenary Enrollment is a solid A. Uh, Mercenary Enrollment is one of those series that I was sure had no potential for the future. After they finished the first arc where uh, where the main character beat up the bullies and like saved some people, I was like, what are they going to do? Just repeat this again and again and again? And they kind of do. Uh, but it's so good. The Seeing the character, uh, I won't even say growth. I'll say the, the growth of the amount of relationships that Ijin has with different characters has made this such a fun series to follow. It's phenomenal. Uh, and it's one of the ones, when I see all my updated manhwa for the week, it's one of the first ones I go read every single time. So why is it not S tier? Honestly, I think visually there's things that are better. I think storyline, there's things that are better. Um, in what it's doing, action, I think it's one of the best uh, that's not power-based or things like that. That being said, I think the art style sometimes is really painful, particularly in the action moments. It could be a lot better than it is, but it has its own style and I respect it for it. Overgeared. All right. Overgeared for me is B tier. Uh, the reason for Overgeared's B tier is I think it has an amazing start. It's really good for quite some time, but it drops off quite heavily later. I think it becomes a lot weaker. Um, 
just because you, you get used to what's going on. He's really strong, and now he's fighting against different monsters in different areas, and he has his reputation with different uh, different clans and stuff like that. I don't know. I, I, I just the real world stuff like just was not engaging either with it. But I think it's still definitely an interesting one to check out. And the visuals of, of Overgeared are fantastic. All right. SSS Class Suicide Hunter. Um, I think this is between B and A. Mm. I think this is one of the good ones. Uh, it has some really interesting concepts. I think uh, from a power perspective, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it B tier because I think it's... Uh, it still has a long way to go before it has enough chapters to really know if it's going to be consistent. So I think I'll leave it B tier for now. And I think it has the potential to be an A. Uh, I don't know about potential to be an S, but the the idea of how the main character gets his, his updated powers and his, uh, his new skills is tough. And it pushed us to kind of contemplate... Uh, what that means for the main character and I, I don't know I, I think it's a it's really good um Return's Magic should be special mm. no 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 Return's Magic should be special it to me is one of the best ensemble mono out there but 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 is it worth putting in the A tier hmm I'm gonna I'm gonna drop it in the I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it in the C tier as much as Return's Magic should be special is like Honestly, it's been in my top 10 for a long time. I love reading it. I can't deny that it kind of meanders in moments, and some of the side characters I'm just not that engaged with. It's it's frustrating. All right. S Second Coming of Gluttony, I'm sorry to say, goes in the Hurt My Soul section. Uh... What a waste of potential! When you start off the well, when you start off the manual, you read the first two, like the first chapter. You're just like, oh, it's this epic adventure and things like that. Then you read the first other chapters, and you're like, what is this? They're like in a school, and like there is these different scenarios, and the characters have to survive against these monsters. You're like, okay, and then it turns into a bit of a harem situation, and it's just. It's just not good. It's one of the worst example of if Blade of Evolution was something that Squan didn't have potential from the start because of some bad setup and just some bad storyline and bad dialogue. This one is one that started off with potential but like completely dropped the ball really quickly. So I'm gonna put it in my heart, my soul. You might disagree. Actually, leave your comment down below and like and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. What do you guys think of these? Uh, or how much do you disagree and are there some of them that for you are way higher on this this ranking or some of them that are way lower? I'm curious if there's one that... Grey Mage returns after 4,000 years. This is probably one that... Uh... I'm putting A tier. I don't think it's S tier just because I don't think it's the best at what it does. Magic-wise, I think it's really cool. I think the visuals are, are a little unique. They have a little bit of a, their own design to them. And I've really enjoyed the story of a character that's fighting to free humanity. Um, yeah, I, I just Great Mage Returns. It's in my top ten, and it always probably always will be, just because I love the 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 the, the challenge of humanity fighting against these demigods to try and find their place within the world to like be able to decide their own fate. It's so good. Tomb Raider King. Tomb Raider King is for me D tier. This is this is one that's really lower than most other tiers I've seen. Uh, and this is simply because it's very, very repetitive to me. Um, while I say that there's a lot of variety of around, types of relics and things, the art style is nothing special to write home about, and I got really tired of the series after maybe 60, 70 chapters. Which, I mean, is still a fair bit of chapters before getting tired of a series, but it, it just didn't work for me. It did not work for me at all. The player that can't level up. This is one I thought... Uh, I'm going to put you up in B tier. Uh, the player that can't level up is one I didn't think had much potential, to be honest with you. Uh, the concept was like one that was similar to a lot of other things. A character that can't get stronger by the regular means. It's like being born an F rank. It's like soul leveling in a way. But his power is through his weapons and his armors and stuff like that. And it's worked out pretty well. And there's some interesting um, things going on between the different uh, factions. 
That being said, I think its art style deserves better um, for a story and an action type scenario that's really good. I think its art style deserves to be a bit better than it is, to be honest. I'm going to put Kill the Hero. I'm going to put Kill the Hero B tier as well. Um, Kill the Hero is one of my... It's in my top 10 right now. Actually, it's, I think it's in my top 5. I've really enjoyed it. I think it's done a really good job of showing a character's revenge path and how far he'll go to get revenge. Uh, but also just showing the different power sets and a character's power scaling in an interesting way. And if you like summoner stories, necromancer stories, this one's this one's a good one for sure. Descent of the Demonic Master, I'm gonna put you pretty low on this. I'm gonna put him in one D. Descent of the Demonic Master didn't grab me that much. I like villainous protagonists. Uh, it's kind of my my thing. But I think it's not, it doesn't do it exceptionally well. I think there's other ones that are just better than it at what it does. Memorize. Memorize is a solid C for me. Uh, I think it's been slow. It's a very slow mono in my opinion. But I think it, what it does, it does really well. It's in the same world as Second Coming of Gluttony, ironically. But it's just better in every way. Uh, the characters, the storytelling, the kind of way back of the main character to try and uh, save the people he cared about this time rather than letting them perish. It's good. It's definitely worth checking out. Ranker's Return, the remake. Ranker's Return remake. Uh, I think this is the one with the remake. Um, I'll put you C tier as well. Uh, Ranker's Return's been fun. Um, not gonna lie. Like I, in the end, we read Manwa to enjoy them. But I think the art style's pretty good. Uh, the character's op while being low level, he still manages to win because of his amazing skill at the game. I think it's it's really good. All right, Return of the Blossoming Blade, solid A tier. Uh, Return, of uh, Return of Mount West Act, Return of the Blossoming Blade, just amazing. The fights are good, but it's not even just the fights. It's just the scenario of the character that's sent so far into the future uh, to see his his previous Mount West Act fall to disarray and he has to bring back the things he knows to bring it back up to power but not he doesn't want the leadership role he's kind of lazy but at the same time he's manipulating things to make sure everyone succeeds it's good it's really good this next one is also one i'm gonna get a lot of people disagree with me because i've seen a lot of uh, tier lists where they rank magic emperor really low i'm gonna put magic emperor in the a rank I want my A rank to be something where A rank and S rank are, are you one of the best at something? And Magic Emperor has both amazing visuals, as well as I think it does villainy better than most other things out there. Just because it's a character that'll do whatever he needs to for him to succeed, and and that could mean a lot of people perishing. That being said, he normally ends up not hurting the main characters. That's kind of the whole idea of it. And I think there's still some uh, some stuff in there that's uh, that's pretty typical. But I think I've had more fun reading Magic Emperor than almost anything else out there. Villain to Kill, honestly, is... It reminds me of a lot of basic manga. Like, nothing special. Basic manga. Basic manga, and it's not doing anything particularly special. Um, Return of the Deadbeat Noble. Uh, no, that's not Debbie Noble. That's Trash of Count's Family. Trash of Count's Family, solid A tier. Solid A tier. Uh, amazing art. Uh, the world it builds is really good. It's very consistent at staying with its storyline and him knowing the things that happen in this novel. Um, it's not that exciting, though. But I... Mm, I'm going to put it in B tier. No, it's not a solid A tier. It's a B tier. I do enjoy each chapter. I'm never that excited to read them. Uh, it's a s amazingly vi visuals, uh, good storyline, but doesn't quite work. I'm going to put Tower of God in A just because in the world of Manwa, there's nothing like it. Nothing with an ensemble cast this wide, this much characterization for the different characters in the story. Um, most of the side characters are not one note, which is kind of rare in these series, particularly there's so many of them. Uh, they, they have time to develop so many. For me, honestly, I've stopped reading it. Um, I still put an A tier because I think it's a me thing. I'm not crazy about stories that follow this many characters. 
I only care about Bam, and Bam is not as interesting as, let's say, a Luffy, for example, where Luffy is uh, definitely worth following, even if you have to spend some time with some other characters. But other than that, I think the quest of the tower is original. The games are inventive. Um, and yeah, I think it's really good. Legend of Azura or Poison Dragon or Venom Dragon is... Okay, if this was only based on the most recent chapters or most recent arcs, this would be an A for me. I love this manual right now. I think it's one of the ones I race to every week to read. However, the first arcs of this series make most people drop it because it is kind of depressing, for one. Uh, it's very dark. But two, it's also just not that interesting because the, the quest of the main character to get back his revenge is too basic. It's not, but where it grows into where he becomes more of a mature person, more powerful, I, it's just way better now. I think it's, right now it's A tier, I think, because of the overall of the story and the time it takes to get into it, I'm going to drop it into C tier. I, I think it deserves better, but honestly, if you, um, if the beginning is not there for you, it, it's not great. Chronicles of Heavenly Demon, or Heavenly Demon Reborn, definitely an A tier. Um, it, shows one of the few stories of a character that starts as a kid well reincarnation starts as a kid goes all the way up to adulthood and now is in a great war scenario and it shows like that development the thing he has to learn the revenge he's after they never lose the focus of the storyline there's some great fights in it uh i think it's generally really good i i think it's not the best thing out there nonetheless to be in s tier but it is absolutely fantastic Tales of Demons and Gods is going to be an A tier for me. Uh, Tales of Demons and Gods is one pro is probably top two favorite Chinese manhwa out there right now. I think it's fantastic. The world building is phenomenal. But oh my god, does this series waste time in certain places. It, it's an issue with a lot of Chinese manhwa that just have too many chapters. But in this case, the world building they built is honestly one of the best out there. The interestingness of these different races, the way the world was destroyed in his past life, his reincarnation story, there's a lot of stuff going on there, and it, it just could not be more interesting. However, they spend so much time wasting character moments, like particularly in the current arc that they're they're in, it's like, oh my god, kill me now. Legend Northern Blade is S rank. You don't even need to add like if you follow me at all, you know this is S rank for me. If you like the visuals, they are among the best visuals. If you don't, they're painful to watch. That's one of the barriers to entry to the series. That being said, I do think the art style is fantastic. However, it's not for everyone. Its storyline is not hyper complex at first, but they've developed an interesting uh, back and forth of who's behind de deeds that are going on and who's manipulating these wars behind the shadows. The fights and the panels that you see are fantastic. And there's a scene that for me gave me chills, which is really rare in Manwa. I've had it happen like two times in the last year, one with Ella Seed and one with uh, Legend of Northern Blade. And this one wasn't even a fight. It was just a scream. It was a shout. It was a yell. And it was epic as all hell. If you know what it is, you know what it is. Nano Machine is another S ranker. Uh, Nano Machine, when it comes to martial arts in and visuals, it's S rank. Straight up, no doubt, it's it's S rank for me. It's such such a good manhwa, but damn, like honestly, I, I'm waiting for it to slip up, but it hasn't done so yet. All right, Dungeon Quest. This is a new one. Um, it's original. It's definitely a little bit more original. Gain ownership over a dungeon, develop the dungeon. Um, but I don't think it has a ton of potential. The art is kind of average, and the storyline is not as interesting as I would like it to be. That being said, it's still early on, so we'll see. My Path to Killing Gods in Another World. I'm going to drop you in the D tier. Um... It's good. I think the art style is pretty on point. I don't think it's doing anything particularly special right now. 
Um, I'm gonna drop your talent is mine in the B tier. I think your talent is mine. I thought it was gonna be very generic at first um, because a character going around fighting people to learn their skills is actually something uh, SSS rank uh, Society does as well. But I, I like the way it's done. I just like the way this guy is going to get powers and his ruthlessness to get them. I, it's just enjoyable to me. I don't think it's a series that has the potential to make it to A or S rank, but I think it's it's a, it's a definitely a good one. Um, this one has potential. Uh, not enough to say a lot of potential. Um, I have a mythic item. I think it's I think it's I have a mythic item. I obtained a mythic item. It's good. I'm gonna put it in C tier right now. Oh, I can't put Legend of Zero. I'm gonna put it in the D tier. Um, it's a little generic right now. I think it's okay. I think it's worth uh, checking out still. These are a lot of the D tier ones are actually ones that could move up should the scenario change. Uh, that being said, for now it doesn't appear to be. Bastard is S tier. Bastard's art style is nothing special. It works perfectly for the story. It's fantastic. It's simple, straight to the form, and it's gruesome and terrifying. The storyline is perfection. I think in manhwa-wise, storyline-wise, to, to say one story, not waste too much time, leave us with a lot of tension, there's nothing else out there that's as good. Windbreaker is another S-ranker. Windbreaker is damn good, guys. Windbreaker is damn good. The visuals are like nothing else out there, except... There's, there might be one mono out there that has Windbreaker levels of art. But I think the mix of sports and teenagehood slice of life storytelling is fantastic. I think the newest season has been a little bit less interesting to me. Uh, because it's been more focused on the slice of life and less on the, the sport. But I think it's a great mix. I, I don't know why the characters feel real to me. I feel like there could be guys going through a lot of the stuff. And the storytelling is just... Very mature and very good. Um, Academy's Undercover Professor. I like Academy's Undercover Professor, but I think it is one that is highly likely to have a drop-off later on because I feel like there's only so much they can do. The main character is a little goofy. Um, he has his insecurities no matter how badass he seems, which is a interesting idea however it gets it's getting old thummy already and it's still early on in the series um i'm gonna drop it in the d tier for now uh i think it has potential swordman's younger son same thing i think it's one that is good i don't think it's doing anything particularly special however i do think it has some potential going forward uh taming master i think taming master is a solid c uh the visuals are freaking great in Taming Master. Uh, some of the storylines didn't work for me. Some of the earlier chapters weren't quite the best for me. However, I've really liked where it's gone. I like the characters in the story. I like the protagonist. I think he's pretty on point. And yeah. Um, Deadbeat Noble is fine. I'm going to put a D tier. Um, I don't think it's that great. Unfortunately, uh, I actually thought the setup in the first few chapters made it really unique. However... It just wasn't that impressive, unfortunately. Uh, my life as a player. My life as a player. My life as a player is going to be E. Honestly, I like this chat, this mono at first, but I honestly, it's another one where I feel like it's just not impressive. It's not bringing us anything particularly special. And, yeah. Return of the SSS class ranker, I'm gonna put you D. Um, it's got some amazing fights in it, and that's why it's D. I don't think it has some great storyline or anything, but yeah. Reincarnation of the Strongest Sword God, honestly, is one that I'm enjoying. Uh, it's another VR video game thing, um, which has a main character loses a count and restart things, and I always like these stories for some reason, and I think the visuals are on point for sure for this one. Um, I'm going to put it D tier. I think it has the potential to climb from there, but uh, for now I'm going to put it here. Uh, Constellation of the Return from Hell. Honestly, for me it's a D tier. 
I did not enjoy this manhwa. I, I cannot speak to it. I don't think it's terrible. I think there's worse things out of it. Like, compared to these ones that really squandered any potential they have, it's just the excitement for me in this manhwa that's never quite at that level. And, yeah, it doesn't quite work. I Am the Fated Villain, unfortunately, is a D. Uh, the only reason it's a D is because the character's a little boring, to be honest with you. Uh, the scenarios are funny uh, and fun, and the power levels are insane, and the visuals are beautiful. But if the main character is not that interesting to read, unfortunately. Miriam Login is going to be a t -t 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 B or C. Mm. I'm going to say B. Um, Miriam Login's really good. Uh, if you like Miriam stories, this one's fantastic. It's worth checking out. Uh, I, it's definitely among the ones I'm enjoying a lot. Uh, Town Swallowing Magician, same thing. Uh one of the better magic stories out there. Uh, really good. Great potential for the future. I think it has potential to maybe make it to A rank uh, in the future. So, okay. So, Assassin of the Drifting Moon for me is a lot of potential. Assassin of the Drifting Moon's first arc is fantastic. It's brutal. It's... Um, it's unforgiving. It's done a time jump now, and it feels very different. However, I think it's one of those ones to keep an eye out for. I don't know if it's a lot of potential to reach S rank, but I think this one could reach either A or S rank. All right. Biased. The Breaker, The Breaker New Waves, and Eternal Force. For me, this is one recommendation. Breaker's New Waves is my favorite mono of all time. I think martial arts, fighting-wise, it is the best fighting manhwa that exists, bar none. The fights are fluid, the panels look amazing, and Eternal Force added color to the series and has me excited. There's some things about Eternal Force that I have issues with, but I think it's absolutely worth reading, and I think the whole thing together makes it one of the best manhwa of all time. Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint is an S-rank. Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint is one of... Uh, from a storytelling perspective, is probably the best storytelling manhwa out there. Uh, someone told me this a long while back when I started doing YouTube and different things. They said, jump on this and Reader's Viewpoint. The light novel is such a masterpiece that people are going to go crazy as they discover how good this series becomes. And he was right, because this is by far my favorite manhwa, or one of my favorite manhwa, sorry. It's near a top two or three all the time. The current arc has me a little bit less excited, but like it's nothing is not engaging or interesting, and it's it's just so good. So good. Um, Duke Pendragon. Listen, Duke Pendragon is one of those ones that um, I thought would have the potential to be an A ranker for me. I think it's going to remain in the B rank, unfortunately. Uh, the setup chapters, the first few, are on point. They're really, really good. The visuals are, are really good as well. Um, I think it has the potential to become something great over time as a whole manhwa, but I don't think it'll ever have this, the potential to reach A or S, unfortunately. Let's see, where are we at? Tutorial's too hard. Ooh. Uh, tutorial's too hard is going to be a D for me. Um... It's, the concept is cool. Uh, I don't find the executions that interesting. And yeah, the visuals are okay. Return of the Eight Circle Mage. I'm going to put it in E, which is weird for me. I, I think the, the style of it looks good. I think the magic is fine. The, the political rivalry stuff I find interesting, but it's kind of boring. Uh, it's just not that interesting of a manhwa. I, it feels like the pacing is closer to that of a romance manhwa than it is to an action manhwa. And if it was doubling down on the political stuff or things like that, I could allow it. But it still kind of sells itself as a revenge tale. And we're not used to that kind of pace for a revenge tale. I might be wrong in the long term, and I'm always hopeful that something can rise up from an E to a D or a C. But I don't think this one has the potential to go anywhere beyond C, even if it goes to becomes pretty great. On the other hand, Legend Return of the Spear Knight, I'm going to put this in the C. I think it deserves to be a D right now, unfortunately. The whole beginning of the story, before he gets the time jump, 
puts it in C or B. The time jump stuff is a lot slower and less interesting, unfortunately, uh, so far. The max level hero has returned. This is going to be controversial, but it's E. Max level hero has returned is just... Is it max level hero or is it... Uh, what are you? Max level hero has returned, yeah. Uh, a main character that comes back that's good at everything. Uh, I don't mind OP-ness, but generally overpowered characters are only OP in some ways. And he's OP in everything. Whether that's making medicine, whether that's building technology. Like give me one skill that you're really good at that you have to leverage and that you have to compensate with allies for the rest. But in this, he's just good at everything because of the scenario that set everything up. All right, the S ranks I raised is solid B tier with the potential to be A tier. S ranks I raised, I originally when I saw it, I was like, okay. One, the first, the first uh, arc, the first few chapters, really good. I'm like, ooh, it's an action series. I'm like, the S ranks I raise. Hmm. He becomes like the teacher slash raiser of these other S ranks. And I was just like, okay, it's a bit of an original concept, but I'm like, I'm not going to enjoy not seeing our main character fight much. You still see him fight. But it's just really good. Really good storytelling. The art is really good, and the characters that he recruits are on point. So... Definitely worth it for me. Hoarding in Hell is definitely a good one. I'm gonna put you in the. I'll put you in the C rank. Hoarding in Hell's. I just have fun with it. I, I to a certain extent sometimes you have to have, be objective and other times very subjective. In this case, I just find it fun and I can't deny it. Still got a fair bit to go, guys. Let's see what's next. Return to the Disaster Class Hero. This was supposed to be the Soul Leveling Killer, the next Monwa to come after Soul Leveling. And it did not live up to that level of hype. I'm going to put you in the C rank. Still good. Still fun. Fights are good. Way too quick. Things happen way too quickly in this series. But it's still pretty good. Transgra Transmigrated 66,666 years. I'm going to put you over here. I think there's better stuff out there. Um, I think it had a lot of potential. Visually, it's beautiful. Uh, another one where the pacing I find is a little slow. The abilities are cool, and like the main character is quite brutal, but it's still not fantastic. Ultra Alter is one of those ones where main character ends up uh, bringing his VR character into the real world. Um, it's fun. It's not amazing. Uh, I think it's one that had a... Sh some potential going forward, but I think it's going to sadly be an E rank for me. Uh, it didn't have that much potential starting off. It had a very generic storyline. Um, and yeah, I, I think it could easily jump out of E, at least into the D, but I don't think, I don't think it's much more than an E right now. All right. Emperor Lua Wuji. This manhwa is... Okay, so I'm going to put this Manwa in the E category. That being said, I love it. I think it's fun as hell to read. However, a little bit of objectivity. The storytelling's not that great. The art's not that great. The power set's not that great. Nothing about it is that great. And the harem scenario slash relationship stuff... It's not that great either. But the scenarios are kind of fun. So I can't put it in the hurt my soul section, but it's it's definitely, uh, yeah. It's it's an E-Rank. It, it deserves to be there, but it's just, it doesn't mean I don't like it. I read it all the time, but it's, it's definitely not the best thing out there. The King of Bugs is a hurt my soul. Wow. Uh, King of Bugs, I recommended it not that long ago. And I kind of hated myself for doing it afterwards because I hadn't caught up yet. And this thing is just not good. Like, honestly, it, it like, starts off with a, an interesting premise. Like, you programmed bugs into a digital world, and now you get, when the digital world becomes real, you kind of have this way of dealing with things in an interesting way. But it's not. 
it, it's just not interesting. It's basically like cheat codes like that you have and like it's just not the type of stuff we like to see in general in characters. Updater. Updater, honestly, I think is a C. The reason I think it deserves to be a C is I think its concept of using an NPC as the main protagonist, re redoing his world, uh, kind of like how Guy, like the, the movie with Ryan Reynolds, uh, worked out. It's good. It's it's really interesting. And it, it poses some interesting questions about like the future of AI and different things like that, about what if like these things were alive and cared about their siblings and their family members. Plus there's some fights, there's some powers, there's some interesting stuff with the administrators. Okay, so Mukyang the Origin and Mukyang Dark Lady. Okay, Mukyang the Origins is definitely a good manhwa. Dark Lady, not so great. Um, the second series of this one is definitely not that impressive. I'm gonna put you in D rank. Uh, I think it's worth reading. I think it's really worth reading, at least for the Origins. Uh, it's a good one. It, it falls off later in its own storyline. However, I think it's still definitely. All right, Limit Breaker. Limit Breaker, Limit Breaker, some C rank stuff. Okay, OP protagonists get annoying after a while. No, no, no lie, it gets annoying. But Limit Breaker, for some reason, that first arc and the whole scenario of how he becomes overpowered is, is just so ludicrous and so good. I can't deny it. I love it. it it's great. Ugh, sometimes. Return. Um, my wife is the Demon Queen. Um, this one feels a lot like a manga in a lot of ways, except that it really meanders and takes way too much time to do stuff. I'm gonna put you down. I'm gonna put you down here in the D rank. Uh, it's not bad. Okay, this one is going to kind of surprise some people, but Infinite Level Up in Miriam, I think, is an A rank manga. It is fantastic. Uh, the storytelling and character motivations of the protagonists get me so excited for every chapter. I think there's a lot of like bully beatdown scenarios, which I'm always a big fan of. Uh, the art style is very mid to me. It could be better than it is. However, it works for the series. The main character's previous life of being someone that just didn't have the financial means to have a great life uh, and turned into something else uh, in his second life was great. Uh, also, what he does for his family, his friends, the potential love interests. I, it's it's good. It's I just love it. I think it deserves to be an A-ring. Hero Has Returned is a Hurt My Soul series. There could have been so much more. The setup of this one was really interesting, having a character be, like go through some of the most depressing stuff you'll see in Manwa. Like, it's rough. That, that first chapter, or first two chapters, are rough. And then there's his turn, and he's not the main character. And that is, the main character is not half as interesting as he is. And it's not, it's not great. Ite One Class is a solid, ooh, I'm going to give you a, ooh, either a C or a B ranker, my friend. I'm going to go with, I'm going to say C. Um, slice of Life, definitely Slice of Life. Uh, like just slower paced, but great character design, like development, not design. There's actually a live action version of this on Netflix if you want to check it out. Uh, fantastic. Just really good uh, character that gets sent to jail. Uh, like his life gets ruined. Uh, things happen to his family that are terrible, uh, but he finds a way and it's just good. Jungle Juice. Jungle Juice is some good. I'm gonna put UC rank as well. I'd, I'm not that engaged with Jungle Juice, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I think the visuals are part of the reason to read this one. I think the powers that are based on insects are also really cool. Uh, it's original, it's interesting. It doesn't work for me. I just, I don't find it that engaging. I don't find the main character that interesting. But I think what it does, it does well. The fights are, are on point. I don't think it's terrible. I think it's delivered consistently over time. Uh, and about a character accepting who he is and what he can do. Foreigner on the Periphery is some E stuff. Uh, it's just not that great. Um, yeah. All right. Solo Max Level Newbie. Ooh. Is this an S ranker or a... Okay. So I'm going to put this on the potential to become an S rank. Well, I'll say this has the potential to become an S rank. 
this has the potential to become an A rank. I should have maybe made it a little differently, but... Uh, Solomax Old Newbie is already phenomenal. It's already at A-level rank, for sure. The reason I say it should, it should be there is I think there's a series that still does some of its stuff better. I think Soul Leveling is still better than it at the quality of the fights, the pacing, the speed, and things like that. I think the itemization is really interesting, but there's another one on this list that I think does itemization either as well or close to as well. Uh, so yeah, I'll put it there. I think, I think it definitely has, it might already be S rank in my head, but it, it's, it's peak. It's fantastic. I think it has also less weaknesses in soul leveling in some of the other categories, but it's not quite at the other level in, in what it's best at. Okay. Ella seed. I just caught up with Ella seed last week and right now it's, it's at least a rank at least a rank I'm gonna put it S rank the reason why it's it's so good no I can't I can't it's not the best there is at that okay um, the only reason it doesn't quite make it to S rank for me is I think it is one of the funnest series to read out there I think it's really really good I think it has the later chapters are so good but it has a really slow start. I wasn't able to get into it for the first, oh God, for first few years that people recommend it because like the first 10 chapters or so were really slow. Actually, the first 30 chapters are slow, are really, are really slow. Until he goes to the academy for the first time, it just doesn't get going. Uh, but after that, it picks up the pace. There's more fights with the main character involved. There's more fights with Kaiden involved. And it just gets way, way better. But those that first arc, can't deny, it's slow. It's about relationship building. It's really good for it, but it means it's hard to grab you. And it can't be S rank if it's not like a complete package. Uh, Heavenly Demon Instructor Manual. I really like this manhwa. I can't tell you why. Uh, it's full of flaws, though. So I'm going to put it in D. Um, I really love it, honestly. Heavenly, Heavenly Demon Instructor Manual. It has some funny moments. The fights are on point. The character becomes extremely overpowered rather quickly. He has a mentor that's a ghost. I mean, who doesn't want a mentor that's a ghost? I don't. I don't want a mentor that's a ghost. All right. This is some E-rank stuff. Soul Station Druid was in my top 10 for a period of time. It has dropped off and turned into a very different type of series. It, it turned into more about the animal side of things and uh, almost furry like transformations in their look. Not that I really mind that particularly, but it's just not my jam and it's not working for me as a series. The storytelling is not that great and I think it's just weak overall now. I, I thought the setup was really good. It was one of the better ones, but yeah, it's not working. The boxer is some A tier stuff. Um, the reason the boxer is A tier, honestly, I don't even think the storytelling is that great. Uh, but I will say that it's, it's, it's quality of sportsmanship and around the sport itself is A1, really good. And I really enjoy the, um, the now breaking off from just being about the main character. Well, now I like that it broke off of one of the characters to face on, fo focus on other ones in the periphery. Um, because this dark main character has gone through hell on earth but the storytelling around that is really good and it does remind me of Hajime no Ippo in that ensemble like dynamic though they don't really interact in the same way in the boxer which is very different if you read it you'll understand lightning degree is is c tier for me uh i know a lot of people love this series uh i'm not up to date on it i'm a little behind so like maybe this is one of the reasons why i'm saying this but I don't find it that impressive, but I do think the storytelling is, is pretty good, and I think the the power-up system is good as well. The skills are cool, uh, the character interactions are on point, but I don't think it's doing anything that's way above everything else out there. Return of the Flows and Player, uh, I'm going to put you D rank. Return of the Flows and Player suffered from being on really long hiatuses. Uh, between the first and second arc, it was a huge hiatus. It really killed excitement for the series. And the concept of it was 
kind of interesting, but it did not quite work out for me. True Education, unfortunately, is going to be an E rank. I, I enjoy it. I think it's uh, the concept of a, a professor that'll do things however he wants to do things to deal with the issues of bullies and, and other issues in the school is cool. However, it doesn't have the same level of good storytelling that GTO does, for example. And I felt like this was what this one was trying to do a little bit, was to imitate a GTO. Uh, great Teacher Onizuka, if you haven't read it, definitely go read it. Uh, it's an amazing manga. Good anime, too. A little age for most people nowadays but it doesn't, it doesn't hold up. Damn Reincarnation has the potential of being an S rank. This is a really early on series for me to say this, but the visuals are amazing. The character motivations are kind of new. A main character sacrifices himself to save the hero of a different story. He's reborn. He didn't like the main character very much. He's not he wasn't op in his past life other people were stronger than him in his team and he's not out for revenge he's an out to understand what happened after he died because they didn't defeat the big bad villain and they even made deals with the big bad villain and he wants to know what it is and while i feel like i kind of guessed perhaps some stuff about the series i think the world building they're doing around his the family the family line who will become the next head um they're dealing with something regarding addiction in, in the uh, in the storyline regarding one of his family members, which is very mature for, for a manga, which I'm not typical of seeing, and really shocked me because I thought that other character would become one of the good guys. But no, I think the storytelling is fantastic. The only reason I can't put it uh, in A rank or S rank, honestly, it's just because it's really early on. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely up there. Doombreaker, my boy, is a B. Mm, is a C. Okay, Doombreaker is one of those ones that I think everyone that read the first chapter just because of the visuals was excited about seeing where it would go. Uh, really exciting visuals for that one, and it, it was just amazing. But the series that followed is not as good at all. Uh, he does some stuff that I find fun as a character. I think he plays against against and with the gods in an interesting way because it's all about him getting back. But yeah, it's... Gosu for me is a C-ranker. Um, cool premise, cool setup for the story. Uh, finished series that does not live up at the end. I don't think it was a great ending for the story. But I think action was good a little bit too comedy driven for a good while of the story for the first arc in particular some really crazy fight stuff that happens later where the character really struggles but yeah lord's coins aren't going down this is a b ranker for me um honestly i didn't think i'd like this manhwa as much as i did but the idea of a, a main character that's like driven by profit of this third dimensional system that he gets to use to leverage magic uh, to leverage to gain like wealth and strength and all these different things in this second life where he got like owned in his first life it's really engaging uh i really like the series i think the concept has a ton of potential i think it could make it up to a rank uh it's tough for series that are so unique in my mind to make it up to a rank because they're hard to evaluate against other things but i think at what it does it's probably the best one out there Leveling with the Gods is a solid... I'm going to put Leveling with the Gods as an A. I'm going to put Leveling with the Gods as an A rank. I was thinking of putting it as an S rank when I started this. But I think overall, Solo Max Level Newbie has done a better job at developing the itemization of the world. Leveling with the Gods, however, has amazing visuals, and they're different. And what I appreciate is they're a little different than what you're typically used to. The itemization is very god-related, so you have like the the strength of Hercules and these different things like that. And I don't know, it just really works for me. But yeah. Okay, Manager Kim. Okay, Manager Kim is the perfect example. It's going to be a B rank. It is a simple story that knows what it's trying to do, and it doesn't. It does not deserve, it does not even 
deserve to belong as high up as that on a list because it's such a simple story. It's taken. It's Liam Neal, uh, uh, Liam Neeson's taken. You take his daughter, he comes after you, and he f's you up. It does it really well. It's done some amazing storytelling around that, and it's just really good. All right, how to fight. We're down to the last three. How to fight is going to be a D ranker for me. How to fight starts off with a really interesting concept and goes nowhere good with it. Just not great later on. Um, really disappointing to me because I was recommended a few times, but yeah. Guard Pass is one that I think has a fair bit of potential. I'm going to put it in the C rank right now. Not particularly like uh, original as a, like in its school life dynamic. However, having this, I thought they were going to play with the overweightness a little bit more. Main character was overweight. Uh, this girl was his, let's call it friend slash love interest. She gets beaten up. He ends up learning, I think it's jujitsu, uh, to fight back uh, and get revenge and find out what happened to her. And it's a good story. Like, But like, I, I really thought they might play with that weight thing a bit more, but they didn't do much with it, to be honest with you. Her Summon is our last one. Her Summon, I'm going to put you on... Okay, so... I'm going to put in the B rank. There's something about Her Summon that is S rank. Honestly, it's triple S rank. Her Summon's visuals are like nothing else that exists. It has the most amazing art style that exists. The backgrounds and the monsters are insane. If you played Shadow of the Colossus, you have that same feeling of larger than life, beautiful painting-like picturesque backgrounds. It's beautiful. The main character is a piece of trash. Don't like him at all. Didn't like him all the way to the end of the story. It's one of those things where Mushoku Tensei does this too, where the character is supposed to be this really unlikable guy and the story is a redemption arc of him becoming more likable but doesn't work for me it just doesn't quite work for me that being said i watched it till the end i still think it's a good manual worth checking out there's nothing on this other than my hurt my souls that i would say completely avoid go towards e-rank if you've kind of ran out of stuff to read above it uh i think it's kind of that read these then read these then read these then read these Keeping in mind, obviously, that The Breaker and Wukiang are both covering the whole series. So The Breaker, The Breaker New Ways, and Eternal Force. Eternal Force on its all would not be S rank, no way. Amazing fights, but I don't think the we're, we're that far into the story to be worth being S rank. But I can't not put it there, because for me, um, the second New Waves was just so good. I, I think The Breaker is really good, too, but for me, the New Waves was that. Guys, if you like this, if you enjoyed this tier list, thanks, guys. I want to see what your tier list looks like and where you would put things a little differently. Uh, this will be available on Tier Maker. If you want to go use it, uh, by all means, please do check out what ranking you'd put things. And thanks for watching today. Hopefully, some of these series are going to be enjoyable to you. And with that, have a great day.